I finally did it. After two years of gameplay, I felt like I had to create a farm account. And there it is, Spartan Mini. Today we will talk about every single detail when it comes to farm accounts in Rise of Kingdoms, why you need at least one farm account, which civilization you should pick, which commanders you should work on, all that good stuff. Let's go. Spartans! What is your profession? What's going on my beautiful governors? Welcome to any Rise of Kingdoms video. As I said, today we will talk about farm accounts. Before we start, I just want to show you quickly how can you switch between accounts. It's so easy, it's so simple. And this is also how you can create an account. You just click on this profile, settings, and then as you can see here, management. If you click on this one, you can just create a new character for your account. So it's going to be in your accounts related to your account, but it's going to be a new one. I have already done it. I've created a Spartan Mini. And now if I click on this, it says log in as this character. So if I say yes, we are going to switch to our farm account. It's actually so easy after you create it. I'm just going to click on yes. And then we will move on to our farm account. Tell me in the comments, guys, did, did you like this? Make sure to tell me what you think. If you're an experienced player, if you know why do you need a farm account, what is, you know, sending out resources, you can just skip to the next part. But for new players, I want to show you this. You need a farm account to send resources to your main account. For example, right now, I know I'm in my main account, but let's say this is my farm account. And this one, Sun Joker, is my main account. What I need to do is join the same alliance with my farm account and my main account. So once you're both accounts in the same alliance, click on the city and click on assist. You can send any number of resources you want. Transportation capacity is 5 million. So I can only send 5 million at once, but you can just keep doing it over and over again. So you can send all your resources to your main account from your farm account. So that's why you need a farm account. We are inside of our farm account. We are VIP 3. 360 something power. But I've created this account around like 10 days ago. When you create a farm account, the first thing you should know is the civilizations. I have chosen Japan, but I will give you guys a few options. Option number one is France. There are two reasons why France is a good choice for a farm account. The first thing is if your main account needs a lot of wood because France, as you can see, gives you 10% extra wood gathering speed. So if you're using a lot of wood to heal, to train on your main account, then you should go with France. The second benefit of France is your starting epic commander will be John of Arc, which is the best gatherer in Rise of Kingdoms. I think she is even better than a legendary gatherer. So you're going to get the best gathering commander in the game plus you're gonna get extra 10% wood gathering speed but for example if my main account is only cavalry if i'm a cavalry main which is super strong in rise of kingdoms and we have so many cav only accounts if you click on this only t1 cavalry requires wood tier 3 tier 2 tier 4 tier 5 none of these cavalry requires wood for training and same goes for healing. Here you can see you don't need wood to train or heal your cavalry. So when you're choosing a civilization for your farm account, always make sure that you need that specific resource type for your main account. On this example, if I choose France for my farm account and if my main account is cavalry only, it doesn't make any sense because France gives you extra wood gathering speed, but I don't need wood to train or heal my cavalry option number two is rome just like france this time we get 10 percent food gathering speed so if you don't have any archer marches because archers don't require food i think they require stone and wood so if you're not using archers only you can definitely benefit from rome because infantry use food and cavalry use food so 10 percent extra food gathering speed is not bad another slight benefit of rome is that it increases the troop march speed by five percent so Every single time you are sending out your gatherers, they are going to march 5% faster, which can shorten the time that your troops are marching to together. It's a very minor benefit, but still it is a benefit. So if your main account needs a lot of food, 
Rome is not the worst option for sure. For the same reasons, another option is Byzantium because it gives 10% stone gathering speed. It doesn't have any other benefits out of, you know, stone. So if you heavily need stone, for example, if you only play with cavalry and archers, then you're going to need a lot of stone. Then Byzantium is a good option. Then we have Spain. Spain doesn't give you any gathering speed boost. But for example, you might say, yo, Spartan, I don't have any time to log in to, to my farm account and send out gatherers. So Spain is not the best option because if you're not going to send out your gatherers a lot, that, then the gathering speed doesn't actually mean a lot for you. So instead of that, you actually prefer the resource production by 20%. So if you're short on time, if you always, I don't know, maybe forget to log in onto your farm account, you can definitely go with Spain to increase that resource production by 20%. And the last civilization is, I think, the best one, Japan. Here it is, resource gathering speed 5%, which means you're going to have 5% extra food gathering speed, 5% wood, stone, so all those benefits, but only half. But this 5% is the only way to increase your gold gathering speed because none of those civilizations gives you actually extra gold gathering speed. So this thing, resource gathering speed 5% general, so this is for any resource, including gold, is the only way to increase your gold gathering speed from the civilization. And gold is the most needed resource when you unlock your T5 because healing those T5s or even training those T5s costs a lot of gold. And on top of that, in Rise of Kingdoms, equipment crafting also requires gold or iconic boost also requires gold. So gold is the premium resource you will need a lot, especially after mid game, after you unlock your T5 in Season of Conquest, all that good stuff. Definitely. In my opinion, Japan is the best civilization for a farm account. When it comes to your VIP for your farm account, I think the only VIP that is important is VIP 6. By unlocking this, you will be able to upgrade two buildings at the same time. For example, I'm only VIP 3 and I can only upgrade one building because I don't have VIP 6. So VIP 6 is what you should aim for unless you decide to fight with your farm account, I guess. But many of us won't be fighting with our farm accounts so vip6 is the only important vip level to unlock that second building queue for your city hall and your you know academy for your research and let's talk about city hall first city hall 22 is the important one because once you get to city hall 22 troop dispatch queue at level 22 gets to five so you will be able to farm with five troops at the same time at the moment, I'm at level 13, so I can only send three marches. As you can see, I already did it. It's capped three out of three. So your goal when it comes to your city hall is 22 to get those sweet, sweet five marches at the same time. And for your research, you already know it. Just, just max out all that economic technology. And obviously, to be able to do that, you need to upgrade your academy. And for that, we need to upgrade our city hall. So that's our main goal. Upgrade your city hall to 22, unlock fire marches. And then, obviously, upgrade your academy. Research all this economic technology to farm faster and more. The next part will be about gathering commanders and how should you upgrade them. But before that, if you guys think any of the information was useful or helpful so far, a simple like and subscribe only takes one second of your time, but helps the channel more than you think. Thank you guys so much for the support and now let's talk about gathering commanders we switched our main account and i'm not going to waste your time by you know reading the names of all the gathering commanders all you got to do is take a look at their skill trees if there's a gathering they will have a bonus in their skills uh, about gathering whether it's gathering speed whether it's you know extra load or extra resources you can easily identify the gathering commanders but what i'm gonna say is their levels the level you need on your gathering commanders level 37 because once they are level 37 this one superior tools is the last part of the gathering tree and it is the best gathering skill increase the gathering speed of all kinds of resources you upgrade this boom click on this and that's it only 37 points is enough to get this superior tools to five out of five but why not go to 40? Because if you go to 40, you can actually upgrade 
this thing to level 3, which will give you increased march speed of siege unit by 30%. Your march is walking to a node and coming back. They're going to do it 30% faster, so it is good. First, you need to get to level 37 to max out superior tools. And then you can get them to level 40 to also unlock this 30% march speed so you definitely don't need to upgrade the level of your gathering commanders over 40. last but not least if you just want to have tons of resources and have bunch of farm accounts what you can do is you can farm gold with your japan farm account wood with your frost farm account roll with your food farm account and byzantium stone farm account i know this sounds crazy but there are people with like eight to nine different farm accounts i don't know how they handle it but this is what you can do if you want to push the limits when it comes to farm account. And a side tip, join to a farm alliance. My Spartan mini account, my farm account is in another alliance. The benefit of the farm alliance is you are going to be able to have an alliance resource deposit. Plus, if your members are farming in the territory, you can get extra resources from your territory bonuses. And some people may actually buy chests for their farm account. So there are, there are people who spends on their farm accounts if your farm account is in that alliance an alliance with people who spends a little bit in their farm accounts an extra chests will be great especially as i said for your vip6 to unlock the second building queue vip6 is super important gathering speed building speed and unlock second building queue that was it hope you guys liked it hope you guys enjoyed it and if you think i missed any information when it comes to farm accounts because i tend to forget extra information and you guys always correct me in the comments so thank you for that or maybe you have extra tips when it comes to farm accounts don't forget to leave those in the comment section down below thank you guys so much for watching i see you on the next one bye